Welcome to Point Counterpoint. I am Dr. Barrett. I am here with Dr. Painter today. And we are going to talk about chronic headaches. There has been some really fascinating research on what's going on in the brain. Once you get to the point where you keep getting more and more headaches and they just don't respond very well to medications anymore. So one of the things I wanna make sure everybody knows about is a concept called chronification. Dr. P, do you guys use this? in your field as naturopaths, this idea of chronification? We do, um, but not in the way that you're going to explain it, I think. So I'm very interested to hear, uh, hear what, what you're gonna share. Okay, cool, yeah. And I think this is so important because it's a term that we neurologists use, but we don't very often explain it to our patients. So although it's in the backdrop of our minds as we're talking to people with chronic headaches, I think that the people who need to hear about it the most aren't always hearing about it. So yeah, nor picture, do they know what it means. Yeah. Yeah. So this was first described about 10 years ago, and it refers to what happens in the brain when you start getting headaches more than two or three days a week. Now, this is important because there are a lot of people out there with headaches two or three days a week. They take an Advil, they get the kids to soccer, they power through. They're not realizing what's going on in their brain. And it's really important to know what's happening. So I'm going to show you because a picture is worth a thousand words. This is information that you can act on. So this is a good thing. Yeah, really good point. And this is all fixable. So over on the right here is a functional MRI of somebody who is in chronification. That means more than two to three headache days a week. So what a functional MRI does is it shows you how the brain is actually functioning. So those red and yellow areas are where the brain is lighting up. And you can see that the brain is lighting up a lot more than the brain on the left of somebody who has rare migraines. Okay, so these two people have similar genetics. They both have that predisposition towards migraine. They um, are both not having a migraine when this scan is done. And that's key because you're not just seeing what a migraine does to the brain. You're seeing what's happening to the brain even between headaches. Okay. So this, so this is this is no migraine going on at this particular yeah. moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, which is why this is so important because it tells us that the brain is starting to fire differently, even in between headaches. Yeah. And as we say, neurons that fire together, wire together. So over time, if the brain starts firing abnormally, eventually it's going to physically change and become wired abnormally as so a what direct result of the headaches. So what you're saying that is one little change in the brain after over time, as it's rewiring, that it's, it's literally setting the brain up to have that migraine as a normal response to that stimulus or whatever. It kind of is like the brain gets used to constantly over firing. And then once the, it's like your brain is a creature of habit. It gets good at what it does over and over again. You play the piano, you get good at playing the piano. You have migraines or other types of headaches. Your brain gets really good at having headaches. This is not what we want our brains to do, but it's how we're wired. Just because the brain is set up to get really good at what it needs to do. So that is the process of chronification. And I think the message that's most important to me that people hear is that this starts to happen at a time when most of us are ignoring our headaches and powering through. Yeah. Do you yeah. find that a lot of people do that? In your oh, work? for sure. I mean, I just think yeah. back to when I was having daily headaches and it was just like, I mean, that's just life. What can I do about it? So here we go. Like I got to live. Yeah. And, you know, when you feel like you don't have any resources to be able to, to, to do, to, to stop this. It's like, well, you know, the kids aren't going to feed themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you pop a pill, if you can, hopefully it takes it away and you can still function. And if not, then you just do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really important for people to know that this process starts much earlier than most people would think this process of creating chronic headaches. And unfortunately, what happens down the road, if this process doesn't get interrupted, is that you become even more and more susceptible to headaches. So things that used to maybe not trigger you, now they trigger you. Now it's like everything's a trigger. The weather is a trigger. Fragrances are a trigger. Foods are a trigger. Stress is a trigger. Not sleeping is a trigger. Like all the things. 
because um, because the neurons wired together and learn this pattern. So when there's one abnormal neuron firing, then the whole shebang just takes off. Yeah. 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 It's patterns mm -hmm. of um, neural networks in the brain that have gotten used to really, really firing. They've epigenetically upregulated all the chemicals that they make mm -hmm. in order to become really good at this. And unfortunately, the other thing that happens at the same time as like everything under the sun is causing a headache for you at the same time, medications stop working as well. Yeah. yeah. So this sets people up for medication overuse headaches, which I see a ton of. Do you see all the that? time? All yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really like it's not the patient's fault. Like they're no. just trying to get through their day. Um they have no other resources. Like that's right. all they're given. Here, have some meds. Oh, that didn't work. Try this one. Oh, that didn't work. Try this one. Well, now we don't know what to do with you. So sorry. I mean, that exactly. I hear that story all the time. It's so sad. And Exactly. And that is exactly why I do the work that I do today, because I had so many experiences of handing somebody a prescription for like their 10th or 12th or 15th medication. And I'm just knowing this isn't going to work. I know no. it's not going to work. It hasn't worked on the past 20 patients I did this on. And it's not because I'm doing anything wrong. It's because the brain has literally changed. It's not the same brain as it was when somebody's having one headache day a month or two headache days a month medications work great then. Um, but it's a different brain that you're dealing with. And honestly, that is at the core of what made me launch down this whole path of finding newer science and technology mm -hmm. to help people when they're in that situation. You know, I know that we talked, I, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about um, one particular topic here in just a minute, but as you're talking, Dr. Barrett, it just makes me think of some of what we talked about. So we, we both went to a conference this weekend and we talked a lot about how um, meditation and spiritual activity can actually change the brain and change the pattern and rewire those neurons. I think that might be a really interesting topic to kind of tie into this chronic chronification that is very large, very ignored in Western medicine approaches and often not even addressed in holistic approaches as well. I think that could be a very interesting topic for maybe next week. Yeah. Yeah. We should do that next week. Drop a comment below. If you want to hear a little bit about how to rewire the brain and, and what we've learned yeah. about that. So one of the things I've done to help people really understand this process of chronification is I put together a quiz so you can take the quiz. Um, it's only 18 questions. You can figure out if you're in chronification, like not likely, maybe, or probably, and then get some tips on what to do, where to start if you're in that place where you're having headaches more and more often and medications are working less and less because there are tools available to you. The thing is that they just haven't hit your doctor's office yet. This stuff is 20 years ahead of what's in your doctor's office, you know, it takes a while for the technology to trickle down, right? That's just how it is. So if you are in that situation and want to figure out if chronification is part of what's going on for you, go to the headachequiz.com, uh, just all one word, T-H-E-H-E-A-D-A-C-H-E-Q-U-I-Z.com. And that'll plug you into that. It'll help you figure out if you're in chronification, if you are what stage, and where is the most useful place for you to start? Um, because I feel like people with chronic headaches are trying so, so hard to make them better. And it's so frustrating when yeah. things don't work. So it can give you some real evidence-based high-tech solutions about what's most likely to help for you. So that's my message today is wanting people to really understand that. But I'm curious, Dr. P, from your perspective, is there um, something going on behind the scenes when people are having chronic headaches that you see a lot that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I do. There's, there's actually a ton of research on, um, I don't know if, if anybody listening has heard of the gut brain connection, but we are now understanding how important the gut is in brain health. And, um, so that's probably the, one of my biggest frustrations with how, I, I mean, most doctors aren't even approaching diet, right? I mean, you do, I know you do Dr. Barrett, but a lot of people don't because they're, they just really are not 
as you said, the, the, the research is 20 years behind standard of practice changes. So unless somebody's actively looking for these things, they're not finding it. So really, and, and I know that everybody listening has definitely done dietary stuff. Like that's the very first thing that you start, start working on on your own, right? But really it's more than just that, because as you said, even, you know, if the dietary changes correct the problem, that's amazing. That's fantastic. But in a lot of cases it doesn't. And one of the reasons why is because if there is damage in the gut lining, uh, inflammation from eating foods that were causing problems, then that's going to perpetuate the headache of the migraine cycle. Do you, do you see, do you, I know that you treat that right, Dr. Barrett? Yeah. And I think that what's very different about this approach is that it's not so much about avoiding foods that maybe triggers high histamine, high tyramine, whatever. It is about how do we actually nourish the gut so that we can absorb our nutrients and keep the gut brain axis healthy, reduce inflammation that hits the brain. So it's really turning the conventional wisdom around nutrition on its head because it's saying, a lot more about here's what you should eat instead of here's what you shouldn't eat. Yes. You know, people restrict and restrict and restrict to the point that they can have eating disorders or become right. malnourished because they're working so hard to get their I know. I they, know. And it's actually going in the opposite direction. They're, they're becoming so nutrient depleted that it's actually contributing to the migraine cycle, which is super frustrating because that does go against the conventional dietary approach for migraines. Um, and, and we're not saying that it's not important to cut out inflammatory foods initially as you're working on healing. Usually that's one of the places that we start is working on identifying anything that, you know, has act like is an active trigger for you and great. Like you can cut that out for say three months. It's not something where we want to avoid it for the next five years. And then it's not just enough to cut it out, right? As Dr. Barrett said, we want to actually put in the foods that are going to be nourishing that have the, the essential nutrients that our brain and our body needs. But, um, a lot of times we're already have that inflammatory process happening in our gut. And when that happens, there's a whole host of things that goes on. Number one, um, there was a study that was done a few years, well, probably about 10 years ago now that showed that 54% of people diagnosed with chronic migraines were also diagnosed, actually diagnosed with an IBS or an IBD diagnosis, which means um, just a general IBS or you know, Crohn's disease, celiac, something like that. That's a pretty high percentage. And then there are a lot more. There was a much higher percentage of people who had digestive issues that were undiagnosed as well. And they mentioned that in the study. But of course, if they're undiagnosed, we don't really know how many people that is, but it's more than that. So there is definitely a very big tie between the gut and seeing these brain issues. And so working on actively healing the gut. So yes, the dietary piece is super important, but then doing things with probiotic and postbiotics and you know, actually doing some nutrients specific for the gut, like glutamine, assuming that's not an issue for you. And you know, some of the herbs that we have available to us like marshmallow root or um, licorice root or uh, what's another good one? Calendula. So some of those that can be very nourishing to the gut lining can actually help reduce the inflammation quickly. It can help to um, increase our body's ability to absorb our nutrients, and it can really help to reestablish the, um, the serotonin production because there is a direct link Now we now know what, what's the, do you know the percentage I hear between 90 and 95%. Is that what yeah. you hear? Yeah. Okay. 90% so, of our serotonin is actually made in the gut, not in the, the brain. gut. Yeah. Right. We never knew that before. We always thought it was the brain that was making it, but it's actually the gut that's making it. And so, and we also know that serotonin, um, dysregulation is involved in migraine. That's why the triptans are such the, the most, you know, first go-to most popular thing to use for migraine is because it's working on that serotonin pathway. So once we start getting that gut in store, then we start seeing serotonin being regulated properly. And then we start seeing migraines decrease in frequency and you no longer need the triptans. And, you know, we start seeing improvement happening. We have to actively and intentionally treat and heal the gut in order for the brain to get better. Because without that piece, you're, this is not going to improve. The migraines will not improve. 
unless you, you know, stop eating entirely and fasting for, you know, four years is probably not a good treatment option. So I think that'll cause problems of its own. Yeah. I think ultimately that would not be an ideal treatment solution. Yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. Thank you for being here today um, to help, help enlighten us on the naturopathic approach to headache chronification. Um, I think it's always so interesting to just I mean, we all have the wisdom of our own traditions, right? And how we were trained. And I think it's so fascinating to be able to learn a little bit about both Absolutely. Um, during our conversations. We yeah. all have, we all have really great information to share on the topic. We just need to pool it all together and use it in, in the best way possible. Yeah, exactly. All right. And to everybody who's watching, thanks so much. Good to see you today. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.